Soft plastics. They're probably the most uh, fish catching lure in the history of bass fishing, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of different categories, a lot of different brands, a lot of different colors, and they all catch fish, of course, at different times of the year and doing different stuff with them. But there's a lot of confusion I have found, especially with beginning anglers, on how to rig the soft plastics because they're all a little bit different and they all take a little bit different rigging. So let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody? My name is Tyler Anderson. I own this channel called TRF and it is my goal to help you guys become better bass anglers. Today's video was actually brought to us by an Instagram uh, user in one of my Q&As. Let me pull it up real quick because I don't want to uh, not give him the credit for it. Okay, scratch that. I didn't screenshot it, but somebody on Instagram did ask me how to rig all the various types of soft plastics. There's tons out there, and there's definitely multiple ways to rig each one, and of course you can put certain soft plastics on jigs as trailers, on buzz baits as trailers. Lots of stuff you can do with soft plastics. I think they're the most versatile lure in bass fishing, but I wanted to sit down and as best as I can show you guys uh, from this camera angle here how to rig. I'm going to go over the main soft plastic categories. Now I just started to mist here, misty rain. We're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. But I have a bunch of Strike King soft plastics in front of me here that I think kind of characterize all of the main categories of soft plastics. So of course, we have two in the worm category. We have a Ocho, you know, a Cinco stick bait type thing. And we have a Finesse Worm. Two very finesse tactics. We have a Strike King Dream Shot for drop shots. And we have the new Ned, I believe it's the Rage Ned Cutter Worm, the little brand new Ned Worm that we dropped. Then we've got a Swim Bait and a, uh, a flu caffeine shad. This is kind of for your shad imitation. Three different types of creature baits. We have the game hog, which is just your standard creature bait, great for Texas rigs, Carolina rigs, that kind of thing. We have two flipping style baits, one smaller one and one bigger one. And then finish it out, we have a soft plastic toad. And actually we have one more as well. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? That lizard. I think the lizard though could kind of fit into the, the creature bait category, but I'm going to go over uh, the exact size hook that I like to use when rigging all of these. It's mostly going to be a Texas rig presentation. I'm going to uh, mix in a few things, whether it be wacky rig or how to put it on a drop shot or even threading it onto a jig head like we will do with the Ned rig. But I wanted to try to get us through this quarantine together. If you're watching this video during the coronavirus, uh, we're all going through it together. And if you stumble upon this after it all happens, then uh, we made it through. We made it through folks. So without further ado, I'm going to get started with your stick baits of sorts. Now we all know there are tons and tons and tons of ways to rig a stick bait. And so I'm going to take it out right now and I'm going to show you guys how I rig a Texas rigged Ocho. This here is the five inch Ocho and so I like to use a three aught wide gap hook. I don't mess with straight shank, I don't mess with flipping hooks unless of course I'm punching or flipping this into cover. But what I want to do is I'm going to do a standard Texas rig and I'm going to kind of go over this real slow at the start uh, because I feel like it's very necessary for us to go over exactly what a Texas rig looks like because I've seen a lot of janky Texas rigs laying on high school anglers boats that are definitely not the way a Texas rig is supposed to be rigged. What you're going to do is you're going to take the, the hook of the point of the hook. You're going to take the point, you're going to take the hook of, gosh, I can't speak. You're going to take the point of the hook and you're going to insert it into the flat side of the bait, not the pointed side. And you're going to go, uh, I, I like to go about a half or about a quarter inch. So like maybe a third of an inch right there, just like that. You're going to poke it all the way through and you're going to, you're, you're going to round the, uh, the bend here where the eye is. And of course this would be attached to a line and you want to have enough room where the knot on top of your eye can sit inside of the soft plastics. So this is going to apply to all the soft plastics we Texas rig with this style of hook is that you want it to sit on, uh, you know, inside of the soft plastic. So if you were to right now just rig, I don't know, a tiny bit like that, I mean, that might do the job, but especially if you have a weight on there, see this right there? I don't know how, how much you guys can see that, but you're going to have some of your, your, uh, your, the eye sticking out and your weight is going to be hitting your knot. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that I get about quarter inch straight down just like that poke it out and then as soon as you feed the the eye all the way through it should slip and the way a wide gap hook works is it has a little little catch there that catches the uh, the the soft plastic and as you can see there the knot and the eye of the hook are not exposed then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke 
the hook point exactly where it is like where it would sit if you were to hold it straight. So I hold it straight like this, then I bend it backwards. So I pinch it right where the, the, the bend of the hook is. I pinch it backwards and I shove it straight through and then just like that. And that right there is a perfect Texas rig. Of course, if you're in open water, you can just go like this and put it in the uh, in the bait a little bit, just kind of submerge the hook in there. And if you are fishing in heavy cover, I don't like to poke it all the way through. As I'm rigging it, I will start to run it back up through the stick bait as I'm rigging it. That way it is, com well, not completely weedless. There we go, that way is completely weedless. We're gonna go over all sorts of ways to rig Texas rigs on these different soft plastics, but that is my favorite way to rig a, uh, a Cinco style of lure. That is how it should look. If it doesn't look like that, keep doing it because you did something wrong. And so I'm gonna rig this thing real quick on a, uh, a wacky rig. If you guys are unfamiliar with a wacky rig, I think it's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit in the past few years, is that you take a soft plastic stick bait or a finesse worm and you're gonna rig it right through the middle. And I don't mean rig it a little bit to the side, I mean directly in the middle. Unless you're putting a nail weight in the side of it, I would say rig this thing exactly in the middle. So literally hang it on your fingers until you find that middle point. Shove your circle hook, doesn't matter what brand you use. I have, I think this is a Gamagatsu circle hook with a little weed guard on there. I like to use one that is just big enough to get around the whole inside of your bait there, but not too big. I don't think you need a giant circle hook. I used to use like a size two or size four, whatever the, the biggest one was uh, for my wacky rigs. You don't really need that. I use one about that size right there. As long as you're not setting the hook too hard, you're gonna get that hook in the roof of their mouth. So, Wacky Rig is just like that. And this is gonna be a rapid fire video, so if you guys have any questions, please do not uh, hesitate to DM me on Instagram, or even drop them in the comment section below. I read all my comments and answer them. So that is the uh, the soft plastic stick bait. Of course, the Texas Rig version would work just as well for a curly tail worm, for any sort of uh, you know big magnum worm, ledge worm, anything like that, the Texas Rig still works for that. Now, the, uh, the finesse worm, you can Texas rig it but I like to put finesse worms on a shaky head so let me get a shaky head out real quick and just for the sake of simplicity I'm not going to use a screw lock I'm going to use the outcast tackle money jig I believe it's called money head and just like the Texas rig you're going to want to put it about I don't know quarter inch maybe a little bit less than the third inch you did for the Texas rig because it's going to actually sit a little bit different on here and so you're going to want to poke it through just like that run it through and then over the bait keep that this little jig head has, if I can, it's in a Laztec plastic, so it's very hard to, to run it up over. So now that we've got the, uh, the top of the finesse worm all the way up against the head, you're not gonna poke this out just like you would a Texas rig. You're gonna rig it through uh, the bait just like you would for a flipping rig. So you're gonna kind of find out exactly, if you were to hang this down, where it would sit on the hook. You're gonna pinch it, like I said, with the, with the, uh, the Ocho, and you're gonna force it in just like that. And that right there is a good looking shaky head. Rapid fire folks, rapid fire. What is next? Next we're gonna go with your soft plastic jerk bait. This here is the uh, the Strike King Caffeine Shad. This is a, just a fluke style bait. I like to match the hook size to whatever I'm throwing. So going back to the Ocho, if I'm throwing a six inch Ocho, which I throw quite a lot, or a six inch Cinco, I'm gonna throw a four aught, uh, sorry, a five aught, and even sometimes a six aught hook. I like to throw the biggest hook you can get away with without inhibiting the action. That's gonna be very, very crucial when it comes to a lot of these baits is that you could throw a six, seven odd hook and fit it on some of these baits, but you want to throw the biggest hook that doesn't impede the action. And also if you're missing hook sets, you might want to drop down the hook size a little bit. So right here I have, this is the four inch Strike King Caffeine Shad. So with a four inch, I have two hook sizes here. I've got a three odd hook and I've got a four odd hook. I'm going to keep the four odd for the five inch uh, caffeine shad and I'm gonna hook this four aught and occasionally a three aught depending on how I'm feeling that day I'm gonna hook it just like I did the Ocho so Texas rig it boom stick it in you can tell where the bait starts to split I want to poke it out kind of I don't know a millimeter or two before the split pull the hook through just like that nice and easy over the bend in the top of the hook just like that and then of course it's gonna sit nicely in that slot and what you got to do then is poke with your finger and find out exactly uh, where that hook should poke through that slot. You're gonna grab that area, you're gonna find the hook point, you're gonna poke it through, and just like that, you have a perfect, perfectly rigged striking 
caffeine shad. So that is how you do your soft plastic jerk baits. One thing that you're going to want to watch out for when rigging soft plastic, especially on a Texas rig, is that you do grab the area in the correct spot. If you grab the soft plastic up here, thinking that's where the hook should poke out, and you try to poke it out there, you're gonna stretch the soft plastic and usually damage or break the, the front part up here by the eye or you're going to have it too long and if you poke it through there you can tell there's 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 too much there's too much uh too much flap there you have to have it rigged in the exact right place to make sure it looks natural in the water whether it's supposed to fall on a shimmy or whether it's supposed to dart you want to make sure you grab it in the right place poke it through and just like that, you're good to go. And just like that, we are moving along to soft plastic swim bait. Now I've done videos before on the Strike King Raid Swimmer and how to rig it, but I'm gonna go over all the ways to rig it real quick. Or really not all of them, the kind of the, the two main ways. First way being with a screw lock hook, the second being uh, on an underspin or on a jig head itself. So when rigging your ribbed swim bait presentation, there's some confusion uh, when picking what of course, weight head to throw and also which size hook to throw. And right here we have two Outcast Tackle swim bait heads and hopefully you guys can see that they are much different uh, sized hooks but the same exact size weight head. So right here we have, I don't exactly know the sizes but this one is a very short hook and this one is a very long hook, actually twice as long. So when you're figuring out of course how deep you want to fish and what size swim bait you're throwing, that's gonna dictate exactly which size head you want to throw. So I've got tons of sizes in here but when it comes to this one here, the 3.8 inch Rage Swimmer, if I was to rig on, and I'll show you guys real quick, this swim bait right here, you're gonna see that it looks uh, it looks a little bit funky. <laughs> Does that look a little bit funky to you guys? I think it looks funky because the hook is of course, one, not big enough to really get through the bulk of this soft plastic. So you're gonna have a pretty bad hookup ratio. And second, the fish can grab 75% of the swim bait and not actually get it in their mouth. And so this size head is not the right size head for the swim bait. When picking your swim bait head size, you wanna pick one where the hook point, I don't care about the weight, where the hook uh, you know down here where the bend of the hook is starts to come out right when the bait starts to slender down at its biggest portion so it starts to slender down right about here but it really ramps up the slendering slendering I don't even know if that's a word the uh, the the getting skinnier of it right about there so this one fits just where the, the bait starts to get slender I'm gonna line them up exactly how they would fit together I'm going to just like on the Texas rig not pinch necessarily but but grab and make a note of on the swim bait where that hook should come out and sometimes I'll even when I'm when I'm you know rigging it up I will make a note of where it's supposed to poke out I will look at it and I will literally take my hook point and I will kind of break the soft plastic on the side that way I know exactly where it's supposed to fit in so I will rig it being nice and careful to be as straight as possible directly down the middle both vertically and horizontally of the bait I'm gonna poke it out and then I'm gonna slowly rotate it until that swim bait head is perfectly up against that bait. And that right there is the uh, the perfect way to rig your soft plastic swim bait on a jig head. Now when it comes to uh, areas where you can't fish a jig head, so shallow cover, shallow wood, grass, you've gotta throw a flashy swimmer type hook. That's really the only two ways that I use this bait unless it's on the back of a swim jig or a chatter bait. And so you're gonna have to pick the right sized hook. Now I mentioned uh, you want to make sure your hook, whether it's a Texas rig or a swim bait, doesn't poke out too far uh, into the tail of the bait. This hook here is the right size uh, hook bend for this bait, but if you were to put them up together, that hook is sticking out all the way almost to where it gets really, really skinny on the tail. So this flashy swimmer hook is too big. So I have this size right here, and it sticks out exactly where it's supposed to. I'm going to take the swim bait, I'm gonna poke it in there, and I'm not gonna screw it too far onto the head, but I'm also not gonna leave you know, anything on the screw showing. So I'm gonna screw it just to where the head of the soft plastic swim bait starts to get to uh, the eye of the hook, just like that, where it still has a little bit of movement. It's not totally screwed up where you can't hardly move the swim bait. And then I'm gonna stick it there, I'm gonna find out where the hook should poke through, I'm gonna bend it, and I'm gonna poke it through. Gorgeous, folks. We're cranking through these things. I hope you're learning something. I hope this isn't too uh, fundamental, but if it is, 
That's how it goes. Somebody's got to teach you. You know what? I'm going to skip creature bait because it's it's literally the exact same as your Texas rig worm. But I am going to show you one little thing with creature baits. Actually, the I'm going to show you the lizard because the li lizard is a little bit different. With creature baits and, and, and worms that are very, very skinny, you've got to be careful not to use a hook that is too thick. So let me show you guys uh, an example of what not to use. Okay, so this is a Tokyo rig. I don't actually have the hook separated yet, but this is a giant flipping hook. This is a size 5 aught. This is not the right hook to use with a lizard, and I'm going to show you why. So if I start to put the hook in there, it is not just a strong hook. It is a thick hook. So if I was to rig it through like this, pull it on through, you're going to see, I don't know if you guys can see that, that I have already damaged the head of the lizard due to how thick the hook is. And so it might work for a second, but after catching one fish on this thing and maybe dragging it through some bushes or some grass, uh, you're going to have some damage to the soft plastic because the hook is just, is just too thick. And especially with a lizard, you have to really make sure you pinch it in the right area because too much pull and the lizard looks really weird and not enough pull and it is scrunched up. So you have to make sure you get the exact right amount of pull. And the way a lizard is built, oftentimes a regular wide gap hook does not work because it doesn't have enough bait to go around. It doesn't have enough bait to, uh, to have the hook point go through and back in for a Texas rig. So this is the one situation that I will, in fact, throw a straight shank hook. Okay, I don't have one, but we're gonna re-rig it with a, uh, a standard three-aught wide gap. You're gonna poke it through. You're gonna run it around. Yep, that, that flipping hook already, that thick hook already messed it up. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you pinch it in the right spot. And with a lizard, it's almost always important to not poke it all the way through. And I don't care if you're in heavy cover or not, you almost always want to run it back down the side of it. And your lizard might look a little weird. Lizards are hard to rig, uh, but they are definitely one of the most productive baits here in the springtime on beds and off beds, just kind of dragging around on a Carolina rig. So that is how you rig uh, a lizard, and a creature bait is very much the same. Uh, I don't really have to go into that. I'm gonna go into, real quick, before we hop into the fun stuff, the soft plastic punching and flipping baits, I'm gonna go over, this is the uh, the Super Toad by Strike King. It is a uh, like a gurgle toad on the top of the water, top water frog. This thing, I always use a double hook. It's a double frog hook. It is meant for these types of soft plastic frogs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bite off a little bit of the top. That way the, uh, the screw lock doesn't have a hard time going in. Make sure when you're screw locking baits that you always screw lock as straight as possible. So I got the screw in there and I'm screwing that thing. Oh, there's a fish over there. I'm screwing that thing nice and straight. And again, just like I did on the swim bait, don't wanna screw it on there too much, just enough so it gets to the front of the screw. And you're gonna to wanna to pick a, a double frog hook that is the right size for your frog. So this one here, actually a little bit too big. I don't have any of the size that fit, but you're going to want to, just like the Texas rig, pull down, see exactly where the hook should go in, and then kind of, I take two fingers here and I kind of push both sides up like this, poke them through and pull them out. That was a little bit too short. Just like that, you have a perfectly rigged topwater toad. Actually, it's not perfectly rigged. This one could be a little bit farther down. You may have to independently adjust the legs a little bit, but you want the legs as the frog is sitting there, and of course poke it back in if you can, you want the legs to be as flat as possible. That one there is a little messed up. Topwater frogs are definitely hard to, uh, to rig, but once you get them, they can be some dang fish catchers. This one is really not a huge player in my tackle box, but I do want to throw it in there because it's a soft plastic and I wanted to show how to rig all of the soft plastic. Moving on to the finesse tactics. We're gonna put the Strike King Dream Shot on a drop shot. So when you're fishing a drop shot, usually it's a smallmouth type thing. Now I know a lot of guys catch largemouth and spots on a drop shot, but drop shots were invented to catch those smallmouth bass that have a smaller mouth. So when you're fishing a drop shot, you're usually fishing a smaller size lure. This here is the three inch I believe it's three inch. Oh, four and a quarter inch. I was wrong. Uh, the four and a quarter inch um, striking dream shot. And I'm either going to put it on one of two different hooks. One, the first one is going to be, if you can see that, a one aught. This is a tiny little one aught Texas rig, uh, a wide gap hook. Or I'm going to put it on a nose hook, little tiny circle. I don't exactly know what brand these are, but the little circle hook just like that. So I've got a jumble of hooks right here, but all you got to do is do a simple hook in the nose 
and then I like to poke it out of the front of the nose. So, well, actually, that looks janky. That was bad. Boom, just like that. And you have your perfect little nose hooked striking dream shot. Now, like I said, I don't really use the circle hooks all that much. That was kind of the rage back a while ago. Now I like to use the tiny Texas rig. So, and this is going to be the exact same as your Texas rig. So you're gonna wanna take the hook. It is a one-aught. You're gonna wanna poke it. Uh, now remember the drop shot has the, the, the knot sitting here and the weight going down and a line to your rod going up. So you can't actually bury the, um, the eye of your hook. So I do it just enough to not bury it. I'm going to bend it through, being nice and careful with it. Bim bam, boop, find the exact point, poke it through, and you got yourself a little drop shot. The next little finesse bait is going to be your Ned Rig. There's tons of different Ned Rigs out there, tons of different Ned Rig heads. I use the Outcast Tackle. And uh, again, hook size and weight size are important just like they were for the swim bait. You don't want to overpower your Ned Rig with too big of a hook. I have seen some companies out there that have created Ned Rig hooks not really a Ned Rig hook. It's more like just a regular swim bait jig head. Uh, the Outcast Tackle one is incredible. Of course, I'll have all this tackle linked below for you guys to check out and purchase, but I like to have the Ned Rig hook come out on the Strike King baits at least, where it transitions from the, the smoothness of the bait back to the ribs, kind of like the, the egg sack, or I guess whatever they try to call that thing. And so I'm going to make a note of exactly where that is. It is right on that line there. You're going to rig just like a swim bait, as straight and down the middle as you can and I'm gonna poke it out right there. You're gonna feed this down. And just like that, you got yourself a Ned Rig. In the last soft plastic that I can think of, I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I've kind of got the whole the whole gambit of soft plastics uh, is going to be your compact creature bait. So your, your flipping style bait. So I'm gonna get two different sizes here and show you guys how to flip it on both a Texas rig uh, and, and fit the size hook for it and also on a punch rig, you know, a flip-in hook, bigger thick hook type thing. So we've got the four and a half inch uh, Rage Bug, and you've got the four inch, I believe it is, Strike King uh, Rodent. And these two I definitely use kind of interchangeably, interchangeably. If I'm fishing for bigger fish that are feeding on bigger bait fish, of course, I'm gonna go with the Structure Bug. And if I'm just flipping grass and pads and such, I usually go with the, uh, the Rodent. So if I'm gonna go with the Rodent, and I'm just flipping it around, I'm gonna go with a four-aught Texas rig. So I'm gonna rig it just like I do with the Ocho, I'm gonna poke it through the top right here. Again, about a third of an inch. Make sure it pokes all the way through. And then you want to make sure that your hook lines up with somewhere before the tails start. So I like to get the biggest hook I can get away with. I could get away with a five inch hook, not a five inch hook, a, 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 a five aught hook on this, but I like it because the, uh, the end of the hook there where it bends pokes out right kind of where the tails start, where the eyes are on the rodent and I'm going to poke it through and just like I always do I'm going to feed it kind of back down the side and poke it back in and right there you got a perfectly rigged rodent and with the structure bug I'm going to show you guys with that same Tokyo rig that I had going on here is a, I think this is a five aught flipping hook and it easily fits on this rodent so I can even go with the six aught if I wanted to but I'm going to poke it through just like I did feed it on through there. And as you can see, this soft plastic is thick enough to handle the thickness of that hook. I'm gonna poke it through, turn around, make sure it pops right on the other side of that hook keeper. And then I'm not gonna poke this one all the way through due to how the, the shape of this hook, there's no bending back of it like a, a wide gap is. It's just down, around, and back the other way. And so I'm gonna find out exactly where it's supposed to go in. I'm gonna poke it in right about there. And I'm gonna feed it on the inside and kind of feel the hook go along the inside. Perfectly weedless and a fish bites it, wham! You got him in the top of the mouth. Oh, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure we've covered all the basics. So that's kind of the, the general overview of soft plastics. Hopefully you guys learned something. I, I bet this video is longer than both I thought it was and then you thought it needed to be, but I just wanted to go through what they all should look like. What every single soft plastic and the main way you rig it should look like because they're all a little bit different and depending on the cover and the size, uh, of course you're gonna wanna change the hooks. If you're fishing heavy cover, you wanna throw a little bit of a thicker hook, but you always want to make sure that you are poking that hook 
hook out in the exact right spot, which changes based on the lure you're throwing. Just like I said with the stick bait, you're gonna wanna poke it out wherever it shows, uh, you know, that it's supposed to poke out because it's all the same size. A lizard, you wanna make sure that you have it exactly straight. A swim bait, you wanna make sure that you poke it out right before it starts to slender down. On the, uh, the creature bait, you wanna poke it out right and, and match your hook size to right before the claws on the end start. There's a, a little bit of different ways to rig each one, but they're definitely all fish catchers and I'm tired. I apologize if I talked fast. I was trying to squeeze this into a short video, but it definitely was not short. But hey, if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. I have tons of other fishing videos. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.